Uh, okay, so what's the difference here? Okay, if you read any of these RFCs, right, they love these words, right? They always have must, should, can, can't, that sort of stuff. And they always capitalize. I just love that, right? So it's like to wake you up as you're reading, you must do this. Okay, so, so if you read the RFCs, it will say main mode must be implemented. On the other hand, aggressive mode should be implemented. What does that mean? Well, at least according to one other author, uh, it means that aggressive, if aggressive mode is not implemented, you should feel guilty about it. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, if you think about it, a lot of people probably don't care about the anonymity, so they want to use aggressive mode, but they still must implement main mode, okay? And somebody else may not have even implemented aggressive mode because it's not required. Okay, so that could be sort of an interoperability issue, or at least an annoyance. Uh, okay, for this public key, the one we just looked at, um, if you're a passive attacker, okay, meaning you just sit there and watch the messages go back and forth, okay? So if that's Trudy, just watching the messages. In um, a main mode, Trudy will not know that it's Alice and Bob, right? She will not see that identifying information. But in aggressive mode, she will. Okay. Now, how about an active attacker? What do we mean by an active attacker? Inserts, deletes. Someone who can, you know, play the role of Alice and or Bob, who can insert, delete, send bogus messages, all that sort of stuff. So if Trudy's in that role, can she determine who's communicating or who's trying to communicate here? Yeah, think about it. It's a good homework question. Okay. But the answer is yes. Even in main mode, Trudy can actually determine who's communicating if she's a, an active attacker. Okay, next mode, uh, symmetric key, main mode. Okay, this means Alice and Bob share a symmetric key, let's call it K sub AB. That's what they're relying on to authenticate each other. Okay, first message. Okay, and again, main mode, what do we try to accomplish in main mode for all these six costly messages? Anonymity. So we're trying to hide the identities. Okay, who's communicating? So very similar. Send off your initial initiator cookie, the crypto proposal. Bob comes back with his responder cookie, and he selects from the crypto parameters. Formally, it looks the same as the previous uh, uh, main mode. Uh, Alice comes back, sends her Dippy Hellman value, and this is just an identifier, right? Sends her Dippy Hellman value into nonce. Bob does the same thing, symmetric, right? Okay, then Alice sends what? Well, she's going to prove that she's Alice, okay? So she identifies the connection. She says, hey, I'm Alice. Here's the proof that I'm Alice. It's encrypted with the key K. Bob does a similar thing. Formally, it looks the same, okay? The difference is what? The difference is that the proof is going to rely on this instead of a digital signature, okay? Okay, so what is the proof? Well, the proof is just a hash. Hey, anybody can compute a hash, right? How does that prove that it's Alice or Bob? Can't you compute a hash? You know what the hash function is. You know what G to the A is. You know what G to the B is. You saw those things, right? You know I, C, R, C, C, P. Anybody can see those. Okay, this includes K. It includes G to the A and B. So what? Trudy could be doing a man in the middle attack, right? She would know G to the A and B, and that would be G to the A and B. Yeah, but K is a hash of K B. Oh, okay, there we go. Finally, finally. <laughs> okay, you've got to go up like three levels here. But K A B is required to compute this hash, which is required in, which is used in this hash, which is used in this hash. So without K A B, you cannot compute the correct thing here. You cannot compute the correct hash. So it does prove that you have KAB if you can compute that hash correctly. Okay, and the rest of it sort of acts as integrity check kind of things again, okay, as we saw before. Uh, okay, so Bob should be convinced that this is Alice, and Alice should be convinced it's Bob, just like before, right? Okay, any questions? 
Okay, so we saw this in the, te in the test, right, and some of the problems in the previous chapter. This is symmetric keys, right? Now, Bob's a server, okay? So Bob has shares symmetric keys with lots of users. He shares a key with Alice. He shares a key with Charlie. He shares a key with Dave, and so on and so forth, right? Now, when this message shows up, how does he know which key to use? And we have this anonymity, right? He doesn't know who he's talking to. So at this point, he has to decide which key is he going to use. Well, it's easy, right? He just decrypts this, and it says Alice, and then he knows to use Alice's key, K-A-B. What's the problem? <laughs> OK, you have to use K-A-B in order to get K. So you have to know you're talking to Alice before you know you're talking to Alice. <laughs> what could be simpler? OK, so there's kind of a catch-22, a chicken and egg kind of thing, right? Who are you talking to? You have to know who you're talking to before you know who you're talking to. <coughs> wow, that could be a problem here for, for Bob, the server. <coughs> OK, everybody see that? OK, <coughs> Excuse me. okay you got that? See the problem here? We go to all this effort to hide the identities, right? By hiding the identities, we've created a problem here for Bob. How does he know which key to use? You know, because he doesn't know he's talking to Alice. All right. Okay, so it's a kind of a catch-22, I would say. So Alice sends her ID in message 5. It's encrypted with this key, K. To find K, Bob has to know K-A-B. In order to know to use K-A-B, he has to know he's talking to Alice. Okay, there you go. Complete the circle. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, you know, the people who designed IPsec, um, I want to say they weren't stupid, but, you know, I'm kind of scratching my head over this, but they, they realized this was a problem, okay? They realized there was an issue, okay? We can't, you know, I, you know we, we don't know who we're talking to, so how do we determine which key to use? What they say, you read the RFC, what it says is use the IP address, okay? Okay, what's wrong with that? Yeah, the whole point here is to be anonymous, right? Is your IP address really anonymous? Well, it sort of implies you have a static IP address, right? You know, otherwise if it changes, how do you know which IP address, <laughs> who this IP address belongs to? So, you know, if you've got a that really is not anonymous in any sort of strong way, right? So you went to all this effort, six complicated messages to get anonymity, and then you don't really get it, okay? And also, think about the example we gave, like, you know, typically, a typical example where IPsec is used is for this virtual private network, right? So you're traveling somewhere. You show up in your hotel. You don't have a static IP address, right? You can't use this mode, okay? You know, you call up your office and say, hey, I'm Alice, I'm using IP address. Okay, let me connect. Okay, so it's just a, a serious, uh, serious uh, issue. But really, the bottom line question is, you know, why have this complicated six-message protocol that tries to provide identities when it really fails to do so. Okay, how about aggressive mode? Well, we can do the same thing in aggressive mode, right? With fewer messages, we give up trying to hide the identities, so we just immediately say, hey, I'm Alice, and hey, I'm Bob. Everything here means the same as it did before, so we still have the proof, right? Because it requires A, A, B to compute the proof. We have the nonces, so it prevents the replays. You know, we have all that stuff. Okay. There's no problem here. This one does what it's supposed to do. So the question is, why would anybody ever, ever use that uh, main mode? You know, this does what it's supposed to do. That main mode doesn't. Nobody would. Ah, uh, but I think you may be mistaken there. <laughs> because the RFC says you must implement main mode Aggressive mode is optional. Well, just so, because it's implemented doesn't mean it's being used. Yeah, but somebody may not have even implemented this, right? Okay. It's optional, right? I mean, you should implement it, but you don't uh, actually have to. So, um, Okay, so anyway, you know, uh, it's kind of a curiosity as to why this uh, works this way, at least to me. Um, Okay, hang on, we'll finish up this part of IP sec. Okay, so let's look at the last mode here. This is using public keys uh, in the so-called encryption mode as opposed to the signature mode. Now, formally, this one looks a little, a little bit different than the previous cases. 
Okay, we still start off with the initiator cookie and the crypto proposal. And it's a main mode, so we're trying to do what? Anonymity, hide the identities. Let's see if we're successful this time. Okay, so we send the responder cookie, we select the crypto. Okay, the usual stuff, negotiate the crypto parameters. Now it looks a little different. So Alice creates her uh, Dippy Hellman value. She takes a non so crypto with Bob's public key, and she identifies herself as Alice with Bob's public key. Now Bob comes back with very similar stuff going the other direction, and now come the proofs. Okay, so the proof of A was encrypted with this key K, which is a hash of a bunch of stuff, in particular this uh, uh, you know, Diffie Hellman thing. Uh, and finally, Bob does a similar thing. Okay, so the question is, should Bob believe this is really Alice? And does this really authenticate Alice? Well, it's supposed to be the proof, right? Okay, well, first of all, these things show up. So do we have this catch-22? Does Bob need to know he's talking to Alice before he knows he's talking to Alice? Mm -hmm. No, no problem here. Why not? Yeah. Doesn't matter who it's from, right? Bob uses his private key. If he decrypts this, he knows he's talking to Alice. Okay. Now, down here, when he's trying to verify the proof, okay, what in that is going to prove to him that it's really Alice? Okay. What does Alice know that nobody else knows? What is it that Alice has to, you know, Alice has to do to convince you that she's really Alice? She has to use her private key. Okay, how can Bob be convinced that Alice, actually the person out there, actually you had to use Alice's private key? Uh, yeah, R sub B. That was Bob's challenge. Okay, and it's encrypted with Alice's public key. The only way somebody out there can know R sub B is if they have Alice's private key. Okay, where does R sub B show up here? Well, it's right here. Okay, so you have to have R sub B to compute this, which goes into the hash here, which proves that you had Alice's private key. Okay, got that? It's not signed, it's not encrypted, okay, but still you had to know Alice's private key. Yeah? Is there any reason why you wouldn't combine RA and Alice in the same message so that Bob only has to be there? Right here, put those two together? Yeah. That's a, that's a good question, okay? So I wasn't gonna get into this. <coughs> There's two public key encryption modes, right? Okay, remember I said there's four key options? Okay, there's two ways that you can do public key encryption. This is the first way they came up with, okay? It was sort of experimental. And they realized this is not very efficient. Okay, why would you do two separate encryptions? You can just combine those two into a single encryption, and they did a couple other modifications to simplify and make it a little more efficient. That, they wanted to make the official standard, right? But some people have already started to implement this, so they felt like they had to leave it in as a standard as well. And this one's a little bit easier to understand, so that's why I present it. But yeah, that's actually a good observation. It's more efficient to combine those two, and you can do that. And that's a different version. But if you want to use this mode, you don't have a choice. You have to do it this way. All right. uh, okay, so this seems to work. Seems to uh, uh, do what we want. Okay, so finally here, let's look at the aggressive mode. Now in aggressive mode, what do we do? Simplify it, make it more efficient. What's the trade-off? We lose the anonymity, of course. Okay, so here we go. Here's uh, Alice sends this stuff. Uh, uh, you know, she just identifies herself right away, and Bob does blah, blah, blah. Okay, now if Trudy's sitting here watching, of course she knows it's Alice and Bob, right? No, she doesn't, right? Because we actually encrypted those identities, right? So, hey, looks like we got the anonymity here, right? In aggressive mode. So why would anybody use main mode? You got the anonymity, you got all the stuff you had in the, uh, the proofs are the same, right? You still have to prove that you have the private key in order to you avoid the replay because you challenge them with the nonce. Okay, so why have a main mode? Why would you, is there any purpose for that? Well, you must implement it, okay? <laughs> but why you would ever use it, again, I don't know. 